Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello, everyone. Our Monday call. Our Monday call. And I have it here. That's why I'm looking down, folks. I'm just getting it on my phone. Um, as always, we love, love, love being here with you on Mondays. We look forward to it all week. And as always, please feel free to participate to whatever level you'd like. Comments, questions. Um, we're happy to have you with us. Likes. Likes, yes, it supports us to do likes uh, and comments. Need to look hard. <laughs> yes, exactly. Anything, like just all of it. <laughs> we love to have you here. <laughs> all right, Abby, today we're going to try. I mean, we're not going to try. We're going to attempt to talk about something very difficult to talk about for both yeah. of us, I think, right? Because it's so oh. close and so intimate to everybody. We're going to talk about reverence and devotion and time, and we're going to share ourselves in our journey. Yeah. To, gonna, em to embody the divine. Go ahead. I was just going to say, we're going to just be in the space together and speak about something that's generally unspeak about -able. <laughs> So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> All right. So let me set mm -hmm. up the question. So as always, we haven't planned anything. We haven't yeah. written down anything. So it might be a little bit messy, everybody. So we ask for your generosity and we would love to hear what you hear and what we say. Okay, but you need to put yourself in the conversation with us. I think that's what will make the biggest difference. Don't listen Absolutely. to us like a podcast or something. Just really take it on. Imagine you talking to us. All right. So let's see. About uh, 12 years ago, right, my life took yet another turn. And I went on a very rigorous search for the spiritual, right? I, I never do things in half. So I went for it. So I studied many different disciplines, religion, shaman, gurus, Hinduism, Buddhism, tantric yoga. I mean, I, I did whatever presented itself, Kundalini yoga. I mean, I really went for it. And uh, it was missing in my life. There was something extraordinarily missing. And I knew it was what we call the spiritual, right? Mm -hmm. So um, now, 12 years later, I'm still on the path, obviously. Um, and I create my life, my entire life, all the circumstances of my life inside of the spiritual, or I call it the divine, because I just love that word. Mm -hmm. For example, even if I want to lose weight, right? I create that any food I taste and eat and swallow, is an expression of the divine. And that me eating it is showing my reverence to the divine. What I eat is a, an expression of my reverence for the divine. And my relationship to food has totally shifted. And Everything in my life has taken a new dimension. So there is nothing, nothing I will not give up to experience the divine. For my human to merge with the divine, there is nothing I will not give up. Not even chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's how you really know. <laughs> so something absolutely extraordinary is happening. When you get into that space that I call reverence, the, the first 
first you experience a total emptiness. The experience is my space is vast, vast and empty, but vast. And the whole of life arises inside of my space. Therefore, I am related to everything, everybody, every color, smell, happening, people, animals, flowers. I am the context for it all. And then you actually experience what many, many very wise people say is that there is no one out there. Hmm. There is no one out there. The whole of existence emerges inside of the context you are for life. And either you're going to be aware of the context and be able to choose and keep emptying anything that has to do with survival. Therefore, you will have the experience I'm having of this vastness. Or you're going to have life occurs inside of the context of survival, but it's still you. And then we know there is suffering, right? But Abby, there is something absolutely really amazing for me that is occurring inside of this context of the divine is that I am still as a context, I'm a, a space, an opening, right? Still and moving. <laughs> and everything inside of it is going full speed. <laughs> I'm just watching a movie on on speed 25 you know you know it's it feels like time have, has has uh, become faster wow. and I'm watching it I'm actually watching time <laughs> I kind of understand it, how you're speaking of it. It's almost like how I imagine, like I, I love the forest and I believe that all beings are conscious in whatever form they're conscious. I don't know. Whatever that level of consciousness, whatever level of consciousness. Yes. Yeah. But I've had a lot of experiences with trees a lot, and I really love to connect with trees in that way and how you're speaking for me, it feels like how I feel in a forest. It's like these beings of consciousness are this vast space. And when I imagine what their experience of being on earth might be like, and I, you know, I don't, uh, you know, claim to understand all the workings of the universe, but it's like, you know, some trees have been there for maybe 200, 300 years. So I imagine them holding this still beautiful space while life is moving and humans and animals and birds and seasons and waters and dryness and all the things are happening in the space of this large still being. So it's, it's amazing when you're, when you're describing it, I'm so, I, I feel that like that, the, it's really like I think what nature feels like, the, just the, the, the presence and then life is moving. It's really beautiful. And you see, if you listen to your voice, I mean, you can hear the devotion. Mm. When you get what we're getting, it's impossible not to experience demo, devotion and then grat gratefulness. A gratefulness that is so vast and so simple that you want to bow. Oh, yes. 
and there is nothing to understand, nothing to figure out. That's why I was a bit nervous trying to talk about it on this call is, how do you put it across? But I think you just try your best, right? Yep. And I want to I want to reiterate something else that you said because it really struck me. You said the more you empty yourself of survivals, the more you empty yourself of those barriers. And you know, it's amazing the space that we have now on this call just for the context of anyone who, if you've ever been in a course with Sophie, and if you haven't, there's a thing that happens where we're emptying survival, we're emptying survival, and there's a space towards the end of the course that becomes so tender and so precious. It's almost like you don't want to speak. It's You're so reverent of the space. Everyone's soul is so present. There's so much love. Every Last time we had a call like this, it was clear that if any human being on earth got into the Zoom room, you would feel the same way about that stranger as you do about the people in the course. It's such a sacred place, space. And if, you, if you're here now and you're listening, I would imagine that you can feel it because I can feel it. There's no protections in the space right now. Like there's nothing, there's no barriers here right now. And it's such a, if you let yourself fall into it, it is so, the only word I have is precious. It's such a precious space. So it's something to be said for why do we do our work? Like, why do we go through the process of looking at our survival, giving things up, looking at our thoughts, our beliefs, our barriers, all the things? For the emptiness of this, the space of, of this. This is who we really are. Right? And you know, inside of everything, Abby, our work, the disentanglement of the ego, the awakening from sleepwalker to being awakened, the shift from survival to being alive, meditation, yoga, everything people can do, right? Is not the end. Those are just tools. Yes. Right. You don't want to to make yourself wrong for not using them if you're not using them. So, for example, for me, meditation, sitting cross-legged in silence, I've never worked. I've done it for hours, eight hours a day for months at a time with a guru and all that. So it's not like I cannot do it, but it doesn't do it for me. Um, being in water does. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. <laughs> Dancing does, if I'm alone. Uh, walking in nature alone. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm will get me to that space, right? So what I want to say is ritual and practices are tools. Just don't force yourself to do something that doesn't work for you if it doesn't. Find the one that gets you to the, to, to that place of nothingness, right? To the shore. Yes. Right. You always then, say trust, you can trust your inspiration, right? You can trust that. You can Above trust what else. tells you, what moves you, what touches you, that you can always trust. Yes. And I think what you what you just said about the tool, there's there's a um cannot remember who said it, but they speak about spiritual practices as a raft. So if you're on one shore and you take the raft to the next shore, if you're attached to the raft, you can't keep going on your journey because you're attached to the raft. It's not that you, if you love meditating and enjoy, oh my God, if you love yoga, have at it, but just don't, um, what they say is not, not, not that it's a should, but like just not attaching or identifying with the raft. It's, it's a, just a raft. That's fine. That's right. That's right. 
not attaching with anything or identifying with anything, in fact. <laughs> to take it a, a few steps further, just. <laughs> and then in that space also, Abby, what might arise for everybody, because it definitely arose for me, is um, I have uh, some figure in our history that I have a lot of reverence for, Socrates, Jesus Christ, and I just want to say to everybody, I'm not religious. I'm not going from the interpretation of the religion. I'm going from the life of Jesus Christ and the lesson with another interpretation, right? Um, there is Buddha and there is uh, Gandhi, among others. And um, inside of my journey, They answered me. I read them. I study them. I meditate on what we know they say. And I get answered. So I also wanted to say to everybody, it won't fall on you. Very rare are the people that get enlightened just by direct download. Certainly hasn't happened to me, even if I had the most extraordinary mystical experiences. So listen for what wants to happen. There is no coincidence in life. If you find a book, if you somebody tells you a book about another book, somebody tells you about something, train yourself to not see what's happening as just random. Mm -hmm. Yes. Look for the guidance and the intuition. And did I give the example of what happened to me with my bank, Abby? I don't think you did. All right. No, I don't think you shared that. So I think all of you, you know that three banks in the United States went bankrupt and closed their doors, right? One of them was my business bank. And, um, Five days before it happened, I never, you know, I have a, I have a few, you know, dollars and I, I mean, I don't have this big business. I never talk to my banker. I just make sure my bank account is balanced. That's about it. Five days before the bankruptcy, I still do not know why I moved my account from that bank to another one. For the first time, I think I opened that account seven years ago, something like that. My banker called me to beg me not to do that, which I was very surprised about because I'm such a small customer of them. Right. Yes, that's right. He was literally begging me. Wow. And I do not know why. I declined and thank you. So if that is not being guided, I don't know what is. And, you know, to be able to experience being so looked after, so protected, so guided, you need to give up your cynicism and mm -hmm. your resignation. And we go back to devotion, reverence, faith, trust. I, we have a friend, you and I, that is an astrologer, and she very kindly uh, got on a call with us and told us, okay, Abby, you have to stay what she told us, because I can't remember, I'm not, I don't have many distinction in astrology, but Pluto is going into Aquarius, right? That's right, yeah. Yep. Oh, I, I got it right. So... <laughs> The last time it happened, she said, there was the French Revolution, the Declaration of Independence of the United States. I mean, every time Pluto moves, apparently it's a big deal, right? And Pluto moving into Aquarius, she says, is transformation, elevation of consciousness. Yeah. Um, the uh, old world is going yes. and we're starting... I think 24 years, she said, 200 years, I can't remember. But anyway, long time 
of elevating consciousness. So this conversation we're having a few days after the equinox, right? Which was Friday. 20th. Yeah, the equinox is the, is was last week, the 20th, and then the Pluto going into Aquarius was the 23rd. Okay, the 23rd. Um, maybe take time to inquire into it. Don't dismiss it. There is nothing to be dismissed in life. And if you keep putting your awareness on every single detail, you will have a life filled with gift. Mm. <laughs> um, I just wanted to quickly add to that piece. My first spiritual teacher, he taught spiritual tracking. It's where you track what's happening in your environment um, as message, as, as a message from your own soul, right? Like it's just this constant yeah. moving process. And um, he always taught notice what your what your attention is pulled towards because we don't always notice when that's happening but notice oh all of a sudden i'm really interested in a a crow and you can look that up what what does a crow mean what is this crow in my life for and um it's not just animals it could be literally anything but it, it is amazing what you just said about doing that practice of being very engaged in your life and messages that show up, it's, um, it, it gives you so many gifts. It's such a, it's makes you <laughs> so present to what's happening in your world. It's a really, it's a, I think it's, it's an incredible a really fun way to be alive too, because yes. you, you are sharp and awake. You're right? in awe. Yeah. 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 Two weeks ago, I had a Robin coming mm -hmm. in my three days in a row and i mean you know you know how it is to try to get a bird out of your home right with two oh, yeah. dogs right so i mean there was no <laughs> this little robin and i didn't want him to hurt himself right so three days in a row and of course i'm talking to that friend that we're talking about right <laughs> you look at the meaning and say oh oops <laughs> I did not. I did not. I, you know, I'm still not trained in thinking that three days in a row, a robin in your home is a message. <laughs> we are all right up about a new start in life, a, a new beginning, uh, uh, abundance. It was all written. What a pity if I didn't get that message. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody, there it is. We wanted to give you where Abby and I are, what we are inquiring into, what we are experiencing. We love you with passion and we'll see you next week. Oh and. Abby, do you want to see if we have any questions or? <clears throat> Hi, Kim. Oh, Kim said we're here and listening. Gorgeous conversation. Thank you. Oh, we're, we love when you folks are listening with us. That's all we have, Sophie. All right, Kim, thank you for being so faithful to our call. So sweet. <laughs> I love that we saw international, right? Kim is in England. Yes. Everybody's all over the world. All right, everybody, don't forget to go on my Instagram. I'm now posting a video every day. That's right. I, that's right. I have emptied my space of the resistance to social media. <laughs> I love those calls on Monday and I love posting my videos on Instagram. <laughs> yes, please. If you, if you are an Instagram person, Sophie's handle is um, Sophie McLean dot access to awareness. It's, you know, all one word and yep. Sophie is posting every day. Please share and engage with the posts. It helps Sophie's page and you know, we're just having fun now. <laughs> all right, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, everyone.